Hello and welcome to the John Ark Show. On today's episode, we're going to meet and interview the legendary Robert Miano. He starred in great movies like Fast and Furious with Vin Diesel and Paul Walker, Donnie Brasco with Al Pacino, and great TV shows like The Shield and Star Trek Deep Space Nine, uh, as well as many other classics. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel for free. You can also like, comment, and follow us. Also, please make sure to tell all your friends about our show. We're going to have a lot of great celebrity interviews coming up, so make sure to click on the notification bell so you can be notified every time we upload a new episode. Now, let's say hello to the legendary Robert Miano. Hello, Robert. Welcome to the John Ark Show. How are you today, sir? I'm... I'm excellent. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me on your show. Oh, thank you for being gracious enough for, for coming on the show, sir. Uh, Robert, you're a great actor who starred in a lot of movies and TV shows, but we noticed something really interesting about your acting style. You have this ability to project tremendous terror when you look into the camera, and that's really effective. But when right. you do it, you also project dignity and power in a way that forces the audience to watch you. You did this on Donnie Brasco when you looked at Pacino when you walked on to the, to the film for the first time and you asked him if he had his vig ready. Right. That, was, that, was, that was a look that made the movie. Um, right. Where does that ability come from? Did you learn it in acting school or did you just grow up around a lot of psychopaths back in the old neighborhood? Uh, you know... I had a very, very uh, strong mother. <laughs> ah, okay. So I think it all emanated from that. Gotcha. Know? And my father, you know, he's a big Sicilian guy. So I, and growing up in the streets of the Bronx, I mean, you know, it's all that. And you're, it's where you're from. It's your experience. And so it's there. It's something that I have. You know, mm. I'm fortunate to be able to do that. Uh, it's sort of a signature look for you. Uh, do you create that effect with your eyes, or is it the thoughts that you're thinking at the moment you look in the camera? It comes from something uh, deep inside. Uh, it's not. It's not the idea of it. It's not kind of an idea how I'm going to do it. It mm. just that's how it shows up. Mm. Uh, like I said, it's just something innate. Mm. Um, you know, something. I don't know if you can explain it, really. Mm. Yeah, it really works. Yeah, I'll yeah. tell you a story. It's a, the Donnie Brasco story. When I went in to meet Mike Newell, and um, I read for the role of, of Sonny Red, and after, after the reading, um, he stood up with a cup of coffee in his hand, and he, he gave me his left hand like this, and, and he put it in front of me, and I wasn't sure what I was going to what I was supposed to do with that, that left hand. And it kind of, you know, my ears got hot. I got a little, uh, you know, where we come from when you do that, it's like, uh, you know, it's like an insult in a way. And I, I kind of excused myself for a moment. I said, do you mind if I just step out for a while? I walked outside, I, you know, got myself back together again. I walked back in and he still was with the left hand. Anyway, Finally, they, you know, I got the role. I'm in New York with Mike Newell. And I say to Mike, I say, Mike, tell me something, Mike. You saw, you saw all these people, all these actors. Why did you give me that role? And he looked at me and he says, Robert, it was your cruel eyes. I believe it. I believe it. Here you go. I don't know where, that, where it comes from. But, you know, uh, John, the, the way I see it is that I claim it all. I, I mean that with all humility. And what I mean by that, I claim it all, it's, we have everything inherent in us. And, and I guess I just allow that, that side of me to come through. You, you know, we now live in an era where terror and projecting terror has great market value. Uh, so, you know, so whatever it is you're doing, it's working. You know, I just I just read for this film called the uh, the Ghost and the Writer that uh, that that we hope to shoot in November, and I, I know there are a lot of people out there 
uh, that are interested in, you know, in being part of something really special. And this is a, this is a beautiful script. It's a love story uh, about a ghost and this, this, this writer who's, who's addicted to drugs, alcohol, and sex. I'm not playing the writer. I would love to play that role, but I'm playing her abusive husband, who is a, an English general who, who is a slave owner. Anyway, what we're looking for is a mansion with a great library and and a long staircase. And it's really essential to making this film. I want to do it in November. The director is Tiniblas Gonzalez, a beautiful director. He wrote the script, The Ghost and the Writer. So anyone out there that that has access to a, an, a mansion that has a great library and this, uh, a, a large kitchen and, and a long stairwell, please reach out to me because you can be part of this, uh, this epic film. What particular state are you looking at for this mansion? It could be any state, really. It doesn't. Okay. We don't, it, because it's such an important character to the film. So it'll all be kind of uh, shot around that, you know, that, that mansion. We'd probably need it for about, about a month or so. Okay. Um, so yeah. uh, did you ever use that signature look of yours in real life on strangers or maybe ex-girlfriends who got on your nerves? I'm going to tell you a quick story. We were just in Switzerland. We shot in Switzerland. Uh, actually, we shot in Germany, and we went. Uh, my wife is from Sw Switzerland, and we went. We went to uh, see her uh, her sister. Um, anyway, we're in a restaurant, <clears throat> and I asked for a salad. I put a lot of salad dressing. I like a lot of salad dressing. And then when it came time for the for the waitress to remove the dish, when she removed the dish, dish there was so much salad dressing that it. It went all over my jacket and I turned and looked at her and I gave her that look and she was frozen in time. She left the table and she never came back. And the manager came and we said, what, what happened to the, to the waitress? She said, she broke down. She was weeping in the back. And then we had to let her go home. She was so frightened. I got, <laughs> so <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> that's it, that's it. So I understand that you and Al Pacino grew up in the same neighborhood in the Bronx and that you used to play stickball together. Did you guys both aspire to become actors at an early age? You know, he was, he was always acting. I mean, Al was so demonstrative in who he was. He was this character, large. He was, he's a couple of years older than I am. And we did, we played stickball together and baseball and basketball. And we went to the same junior high school in, in the Southeast Bronx. And I saw him do his first play there. It was called Home Sweet Homicide. And he was just marvelous then. He must have, how old was he? 15 years old, 16 years old. And you could see already the talent was, was there. I mean, I mean, Al would catch a ball and, and make an event out of it. It wasn't just catching a ball. He, he would, uh, he was so demonstrative in, in his, you know, in his, uh, in his behavior. So we knew right away that, you know, that he was, um, he was a thespian. He was a real actor. I, uh, on the other hand, started out as a singer. I, 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 I recorded my first record when I was 15 years old. Uh, it was a doo-wop group called The Preludes. You can still hear the, the record being played today on YouTube. It's called uh, Vanishing Angel by The Preludes. And, um, but Al, yes, he was, uh, he was all, always an actor. From now, you, you and uh, Pacino both uh, attended Strasbourg's uh, acting school. Uh, what was it about that school that created so many great actors like yourself, Pacino, James Dean, John Voight, Marilyn Monroe, Harvey Keitel, the list goes on and on. What was it about his technique? Well, you had Strasbourg, but even before Strasbourg, I think Kazan was part of the group theater. And that's what it emanated from, from the group theater. And... Um, they're, they had such a strong work ethic 
and they were so passionate about the work. You know, they had come from Russia, and 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 Lee had brought his 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 perception of what the work was, and then Stella Stella was part of that group too, and she had brought her you know her her point of view, and I guess they differed at some point, and they went different ways. Um, and uh, you know, I had a chance to work with Stella. I met with her, and for some reason, I went with Lee. And you know, it's it's something that uh, attracted so many wonderful, wonderful people, and they really they really helped help these actors grow. And and they, they were so positive and so. Um, um, giving to to the actor and they had brilliant writers and and uh, directors that were attached to the group so it was just a wonderful place to you know to 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 uh, to do your work with your peers and grow and i learned so much there from Mar martin lando uh, brought me into the the actor studio and he was he was my mentor and i learned so much from marty Mar uh, from marty lando and, and mark rydell it was just it's just a wonderful wonderful uh, you know group you know i used to work as a producer for oprah and do you know what you and al pacino and oprah all have in common no, um, same all, yeah, well, you're all great talents, but in real life, all three of you seem to be sort of modest and understated and a little soft spoken. And so whenever I see that combination in someone, it always forces me to, to pay attention. You know, the bombastic over the top people, not so much, but real talent and a little bit of modesty, a little bit of understatement. And I know there is something special going on. I right, thank you, John. I appreciate that. Um, again, I I don't know what that is. Um, yeah. I, I think it's part confidence, part a part stillness that comes from ability. You know that uh, that that absence of nervousness that calms everybody around them when they're doing their work. I think it's really really effective. So, what was the first job you got when you left Strasbourg and began life as a working actor? Well, before before Strasbourg, before I because, well, actually, you're right. Actually, I did work with Strasbourg at, at Carnegie Hall in New York. You're right, and uh, not long after that, I I got a role uh, in the original Death Wish with uh, with Charlie Bronson, which was <laughs> you know that was like my first speaking role. I had one one line. I played one of the muggers, and it was a you know. We were all, we were, there was a casting call at Gulf and Western and we're sitting in the, uh, we're sitting in, in, you know, outside waiting to, to meet uh, Michael Winner. And uh, all of a sudden we hear this screaming, we hear someone yelling, help, help. And we see Michael Winner running out of the office into another office. And this actor is running after him with a knife. And my God. So the, the three actors were sitting, we jumped up, we ran into the room. We kind of, you know, got in the middle of it, got, got the actor out, you know, got rid of him. And Michael, he was like, so thankful he gave us all roles in the movie <laughs> so that that's how i got it to death wish <laughs> yeah, it's, it's appropriate for the movie i guess uh, uh, that, tell me about the early days of your career did yeah. did the jobs come easily to you because of your talent or did you have to work hard to make a name for yourself you know, it's always, you, you, you know, nothing comes easy uh, for me. That is, you know, I've always had to earn it. And Al always said to me, Robert, you have to earn it. You know, um, you know, I was in, in New York and I was at a party and one of the, um, uh, a casting, a casting lady was there, um, Marion Doherty. At the time, she was probably one of the the most important casting directors in the business at the time. She had discovered almost everybody, and I saw her leaving the party. And I, I walked out. She got into the elevator. I got into the elevator with her, and God, she said, I said, "Listen, I said, I'm going out to California." I said, "Kid." Kid, is there someone? Is there an agent that I can I can call? And she was so gracious. She said, "Well, call this, 
call this agent. And sure enough, I called this agent when I get out to California and I said I was referred by Marion Doherty. He had me come in. I met him and he signed me on the spot and he started to send me out and I started to work uh, right away. First job, nice. was, I played an Indian for Universal Studios called Bridger with James Wainwright. And they put me on a horse I could hardly ride with a spear and a bow and arrow. And, <laughs> and I was off to the races. <laughs> you know, that's 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 momentum at your back, I guess. Um, you know, I, I remember in a lot of interviews, but, you know, talking about how he struggled financially in the old days. Did you guys have a bit a bit of a rough uh, rough time early on? Or got to tell you a quick story. So here it is. I'm in I'm in I'm in the city, right? And I would have a few dollars in my pocket to get down, you know, get down to the city, and you know, I'd hang out. And um, and there I, I, there I am on Fifth Avenue, and I'm walking in front of Brentano's, and there's Al, and I hadn't seen Al for a while. And I look at him. I say, Al, Al, how you doing? He looks at me and says, Bob, Bob, you got a quarter, Bob. Bob, you got a quarter. <laughs> That's a great, great Pacino voice, by the way. Great yeah. voice. <laughs> That's what he said. I had about, I must have had a dollar eighty. I gave him whatever, you know, whatever I had in my pocket, and there I was off. And that's true story. That's funny. Yeah, you know, he came from real, real humble beginnings. He had nothing, nothing. I mean, they were, they were boosting uh, meal, uh, milk bottles. You know, before the grocery store opened, they would, they would grab the milk bottles and take them home. So, you know, uh, you know why that's so believable? Because all throughout his adult life, you don't read about him doing anything stupid with his money. He right. seems to be, you know, very careful with his finances, and I'm guessing that's a result of his early days. Well, I, I heard that he had it. Did some one of his uh, representatives? I heard. I, I, you know, I, I wasn't there, but I heard, you know, that uh, one of the representatives didn't do right by him. But anyway, oh. you know, you never so, know. So you started in. You started, I should say, in Fast and Furious. Did you have a sense uh, that it was going to be one of the most financially successful movie franchises of all time, or was that not apparent until it came out? Well, you know, this was. I did episode four, mm -hmm. so it was already up and running. You know, and, um, you know, that would go to what is it, number 15 now? Who knows what it is now? Right. You know, who, who would have who would have known that? Um, no, but so, uh, I'm happy to be part of that. Yeah. Well, you know, I've watched the, this the franchise evolve over the years and right. it, the action sequences just get more and more spectacular. So right. much so much so that they make other action franchises like the James Bond films seem boring by comparison. You know, it's just yeah, amazing. You know, they have the they have the best, the best of the best working on those shows, you know, stunt people, and you know, uh, you know, the best technicians, and, and you know, you can't say enough for the for the actors as well. You know, they're all wonderful actors. Um, yeah, so I I really enjoyed being part of that. So, uh, by the way, are you are you uh, in California or in New York? I'm in Santa Monica, California. Okay. I live here with my. <clears throat> I, I was going to ask you if you or your or family were affected by any of the flooding in New York, but uh, no, no, I no, guess no. Not. We have family in New York. Yeah, but no, out here, we haven't had that problem yet. So you've done so many great gangster movies, all sorts of movies, but it was surprising to see you on Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Oh, okay. What was that experience like? You know, it was great because I didn't expect to do that. And I just watched it recently. And I was, I was, uh, I enjoyed watching it. You know, uh, uh, it was done very well. Wonderful. You know, was it James Darren and Mike Starr? And they had some other wonderful actors in it. So it was, uh, it was a hoot. It really was. You know, I really enjoyed that, that process and, and being also part of that franchise. My God. And there's another one. I just did a, uh, like a pilot for the show called Renegade, that's a spinoff of that of that uh, of that show. So um, I know they're looking for you know they're looking for equity. It's called Renegade. Mm -hmm. So I, I I know that it's going to be uh, promoted uh, um, in December. NASCAR I think is going to they're promoting that show um at this at the at the convention center and so renegade be watch out for renegade nice nice you did a movie 
you did a movie called The Funeral with Christopher yeah. Walken. Yeah. And Christopher has a reputation for stealing some of his scenes with this unique, quirky, unusual acting style of his. Uh, how did you like working with him? With uh, Walken? Yeah. Oh my God, Walken! He's he's such an anomaly. He's such a he's such a mystery, uh, you know. At least I found him so. Um, he's so unique in you know. He's such a unique actor in in how he in his delivery in his behavior in who he is and his, uh, so he it, you know working with him is very was very special to me. I, and also Chris Penn, who's a wonderful actor. And what about Benicio? He was in the scene as well. I mean. These were these are great great actors, and of course Abel Ferrara, who is uh, I think one of the most talented directors, you know, of of his of his time. Um, of course, he has a lot of demons, but I think he's exercised them. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, so it it was really a, a, a coup to be part of that ensemble you know, to work with those people. You know, everybody says Sean Penn's such a great actor, but I actually like Chris Penn's acting better. Now, he's been, he was in a number of movies back in the day, and he was really good. Very good. Excellent actor. Excellent. Ex excellent. So now we're going to talk about one of the greatest mob movies of all time, Donnie Brasco, starring you, Al Pacino, Johnny Depp. Was there a lot of pressure making a major movie like that with so many superstars on the set? And at any point, did you realize you were making a modern masterpiece? You know, I, I you know, I didn't, I, I really didn't know what it was going to be like. I mean, I, I was there for six weeks, which was, uh, which was quite uh, a good amount of time to, you know, get a sense of it. Uh, you know, when I first saw the film, I said, all I could see was Al. You know, I watched the movie, but he, he was like so, he was, he was, he, to me, he, he was the movie. And mm. then I watched it again and I could see all the, the other elements to the film and how, how, how it was put together and, you know, the direction of Mike Newell and all the wonderful, wonderful, you know, Jimmy Russo and Bruno Kirby. I mean, you can go on and on. Michael Madsen and Johnny Depp and Al. I mean, um, uh, and, and, uh, and Gesh, um, yeah, the, you know, she played Johnny's wife and uh, um, Hesh, uh, you know, and so, uh, you know, to answer the question, I didn't realize it was going to be the film that it that it really turned out to be. And how did the uh, project come to you? OK, here's the here's how it came to me. So I'm I'm in California and I reconnected with Al out here. You know, he loved to play paddle tennis. And I was living at a house in Beverly Hills that had a paddle tennis court. So he would come to the house with his entourage and his group and we'd play paddle tennis. And, and we got we got, you know, to reconnect. And then he went back to New York and they were casting Donnie Brasco here in Los Angeles. And um uh, Lou DeGimo, the casting director, director, may he rest in peace, was casting the, the film. And uh, my agent called and Lou said, there's nothing in the movie for Robert. Oh, my God. Here they're doing a gangster film. There's nothing in the movie for Robert. I call New York and, um, and Al's guy gets on the phone who I had met when Al was out here. And uh, I said, listen, they, I said, they're casting Al's, they're casting Donnie Brasco. And the casting director said, there's nothing in it for me. And he says, Robert, he said, Robert, I'm, I'm making Al's list right now as we speak. I'll put your name down. Okay. Two days later, I get a call from Lou DeGimo's office. They want me to come in, pick up a script. I'm going to meet Mike Newell. Hence, I go into the... I go into the, uh, I go to the studio. I'm prepared to read for Mike Newell. Two other actors show up. The three of us go in together. I couldn't believe all three of us going together. And that's when we were all read. We finished reading, and that's when he gave me the left hand. So that's uh, <laughs> that's that's how it all happened. Do you think Al put in a, a little nudge for you? You know, I'm I'm at the the, the uh, Gulf of Western building, and we're all there. And we're all waiting for Al to show up. 
Every, everybody's there. The elevator opens up, and there, and there I see Al. I say, Al. And he looks at me and says, Bob, Bob, you're doing this, Bob. Bob, you're doing this. <laughs> so God only knows. But that's why I asked Mike. I said, Mike, because I wasn't sure. And I said, Mike, why, why did I get this role? And he said, Robert, it was your cruel eyes. <laughs> that's it. They just keep paying dividends all your life. I, I just thank God I have them. So, you know, there's a long history of real life mobsters interacting with actors who play mobsters uh, throughout your life. Uh, have you gotten a lot of pat on the pats on the back or people offering you people from that world offering to buy you drinks because oh. of the great work you've done? You know, every time we go, you know, every time we rub shoulders with, you know, with, with the boys, they're so happy. You know, they're so happy. Oh, sure. And they, you know, they, they feel like I'm, I'm part of that, uh, that culture that, uh, uh, so there, there is a connection there. And I've noticed that over the years, if I'm in Florida and, you know, uh, and I'm down in Florida and we meet the guy, you know, the guys are there, you know, they'll, they'll always be endearing to Sonny Red, you know, there's something about that, that they recognize and they empathize with. And I think it's maybe because, you know, I, there was something real about it and they, they, they identified with it. I, they I, identified with I it. think strength recognizes strength and power recognizes power. And I think that's what they see in you and they feel very comfortable with that. That's what I think. Yeah. It's po very possible. Yeah. So there are a lot of great projects on Netflix these days. What do you right. think of shows like Narcos and Ozark? Did, did you see them? Did you like them? What, what I love that. I love Ozark. Ozark, it was amazing. There's so many beautiful, beautiful shows. Mm -hmm. My God, I mean, I can't, I, you know, I, I can't remember all of, them, all of them now, but The Affair was great. I mean, um, so many of those shows were just amazing. Yeah, yeah, they keep. I think they're they're even better than the uh, than the films that are that are being uh, uh, put out by Hollywood. These, yeah, these, yeah, they're really wonderful, wonderful, uh, uh, really wonderful work. Tell what's me that, about. Go what's ahead. I'm now that Israeli, what's the name of that? Hit and Run. Oh, there's a show. This Israeli show that's just wonderful called Hit and Run. I'm gonna plug that. I don't know. We we've, we've been binging on that for the last uh, week or two. Excellent, really good show. Uh, is, that's on Netflix. Yeah, it's on Netflix, I believe. Yes. Yeah. You know, and then you had Homeland, and you had Don Ray Donovan, uh, uh, on and on and on. I was surprised when they canceled Ray Donovan. I thought this is really good. I didn't even know it was canceled. But look, it had how many seasons? You know. Yeah. 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 Tell, tell me about the industry these days. Uh, do you feel that it's opening back up now uh, and getting back to normal, or are we not there yet? I don't think. You know, this is the new norm, I think. Um, you know, getting, you know, getting vaccinated, getting tested, you know, they, they want to test you before you come, after you come. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's unfortunate what, what has happened, not only here, but throughout the world. It's just, uh, you know, we're, we're going through a very difficult, I believe, we're going through a difficult time, you know, in, in our evolution as, as a democracy, as a, you know, as a, you know, uh, uh, as a, as a global community, it's, it's so difficult. And, and I, I just hope that we're able to find, find our way. It seems like we've, we've lost our way somehow. And I just hope we get, we get back on track that, you know, that, you know, somebody's word means something, that the truth means something. It's, it's just unfortunate what I'm seeing, you know, in, in, in our country. And I don't mean to be negative, but, uh, you no, know. But it's very honest. It's very honest. You know, and it's, you know, it's, it's just sad. You know, this country was, was, a, was a haven, was a beacon, was a light to those who, who could come and, you know, and, 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 and follow their heart, follow their dream and be something. I, I guess you can still do it, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, there's something, there's a cloud over us. And I just hope that, 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 you know, that soon it'll pass. I know all things pass and we'll, we'll have that, you know, that, 
that sunshine and you know that 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 light you know uh for all of us to follow you know you mentioned something interesting you said you know longing for a time when people's word meant something yes. and uh you know i was just thinking how rare that's becoming in business and politics and you know in almost all facets of life it's very rare now when somebody's word actually means something very true very it's sad it really is because what happens is so you know it's it's all of us are in this together you know i mean and it seems like uh, yeah, we're all struggling to to find out what what's real and what's not real, and we're not getting any help from, you know, from from the media. You know, all the narratives are, you know, it's it it's all being controlled by by corporations. You know, you know, you know, by the 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 big corporations, big pharma. You know, their narrative is what's prevailing and and what's making policy. So we're you know. We're artists, you know, uh, in our heart, we're artists and we rise above it and we're a reflection of who we are. And right now it's, it's, it's darkness. You know, I see darkness. And like I said, I, I, you know, we need to turn it around somehow. Robert, look, what doing, look what we're doing to the planet. It's just, it's so, it's so sad how, how what we're doing to this beautiful planet you know uh climate you know climate change it, it's a it's a reality it's real and, and we need to we need to do something about it and you know now robert if you had a chance to go back and give yeah. some advice to yourself at the start of your career what would you tell yourself that's a good question um you know, I'll tell you a quick story. You know, I, 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 when I first came out here, I, 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 I went to the Beverly Hills post, post office and there I saw uh, Fred Astaire get out of a car. And I looked, I said, my God, that's Fred Astaire. And I, I kind of walked over to him and I looked a little, you know, that look in my eye and he saw it and I could see that he was a little frightened. I said, no, Fred, Fred, tell me, tell me. I said, all these years, I said, Fred, What's your secret? He looked at me, he says, you know, it's so long ago I forgot. And then he said, just be yourself. He said, just be yourself. So, I mean, if I could give an actor advice, you know, uh, or give myself advice at the beginning, just, just be yourself, you know, and be prepared. Robert, what do you value most at this stage in your life? Is it doing quality work? Is it time with your family and friends? Is it something else? What really makes you feel good at this point? To really, you know, and I say this <clears throat> in all earnest, you know, and I talk about the work. To me, the work is the plumb line. You know, it's the work is what gives us focus. The work is what grounds us. The work is what is our soul and is the heart and soul of who we are. And then, then it's my wife, you know, or I would say it's my wife and then my work because I could live without, I could live without the work, but it would be very difficult to live without the wife. You, you, know, you know, you mentioned your wife. I'm curious. What is your astrological? I'm here. Say hello. Hurry up. Come on. Come hurry, hurry up. Come on real quick. She's a beautiful, beautiful Swiss girl. Oh, Come on, hurry up. We don't have all day. Come say, and she's a wonderful, wonderful actress, Sylvia Spross. Oh my God. Hi, Hi Sylvia. How are you? Very Good. nice. To, very nice to meet you, Sylvia. I have a question for both you and your husband. What is your astrological sign, and what is Robert's astrological sign? I'm a Pisces. Okay, and Robert? Uh, I'm a Libra. Oh, okay. And we don't. Wait, and we, wait, wait, wait. I want to hear what. It, so that's we, interesting. I see why. I see why the marriage works. You see how it, and we don't agree on anything. Yeah, but but it still works though. It's very very interesting. It is interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. It amazes me. So before we wrap this up, uh, Robert, yeah. is there anything that you would like to promote for yourself or your wife? Well, good health good. to everyone. I, I that's first and foremost. You know, if you you'll have your health, then you have everything. 
So let's promote health, you know, for for all mankind. I think that is the the answer. That's the, you know, uh, that's the key. That's that's you know, and if if there's if there's love in 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 who we are and what we are, I think that it comes out of our health, our well being. Robert, did you meet your wife in the States or did you meet her overseas? I was, an, I, you know, I'm an acting coach as well. well that's I was, a long story now. <laughs> I, I, I give you the short version. So I'm an acting coach and I'm teaching in Hollywood and I'm the class is already about to begin. And then this girl walks in before the class starts and there were no more seats and I put her up on the there was a conference table I sat her on the conference table and then I taught the class but I taught the whole class to her the next week the same thing happens and I taught the class you to kept her. looking back and what do you think what do you think <laughs> so did you guys know on day one how long before you guys knew this was it so let me tell you well so I now, came back next week she and comes back the next week same thing happens. And now the class is over and I see the end of the class. She's putting away the chairs. And I looked at her. I said, would you like to go have a drink? And she said. Sure, because I thought everybody was going for drinks. You said she was putting away the chairs. Do you know how I knew that I was going to marry my wife? I knew when uh, she was we she invited her over for dinner with the family and uh, we're sitting there and everybody's having you know a great meal my mother cooked this great meal at the end of the meal my wife was the only person at the table who offered to help my mother put the dishes away there you that's go. how i knew this is a, a serious woman to be taken seriously there you go Good so for your wife i'm glad you did that so we go downstairs we get in our cars and i tell her to follow me and we drive around the block okay <clears throat> <laughs> on the block and then we park the car she gets out of a car and she looks up and it says crazy girls <clears throat> i don't know if you know crazy girls it's a strip club it's okay. a strip club on the brea so there we go my first my it was the only bar that was open that's why i was like so that's where we uh, had okay. our first our first drink together yeah. and what did you think what did you think of a guy who takes you to a topless bar on the first date I'm an actress. I was like, I've never been to a strip club in LA. Let's see what it's like. It's good for my acting repertoire. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Well, Robert, listen, this was a lot of fun. You're a great actor, and it's been a real honor having the both of you on the show. Uh, I want to wish you both the best and tell you that uh, you're always welcome back on the show, my friend. Thank you. It's Thank been a pleasure. So a real pleasure, John. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Oh, by the way, was there anything else that you wanted to promote or no? I just that just that ghost the ghost of the writer. We could find okay. that 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 house that would okay. really help. Okay. Oh well, yeah, one other thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a TV show that I want to do in Croatia called In for the Kill. And uh I I we have some Chris wonderful Moss, yeah with it? Chris Moss and Alexander Mann and and uh, uh Chris Lambier, myself, Michael Pere, you know, there's a, a whole gang of us. I'm on the side. Michael Pere? Did you say Michael Pere? Yeah, what, just, a, what a nice guy. I just had him on the show a while ago. Isn't, oh, he, nice. isn't he a sweetheart? Yeah, we know him from the actor's studio, actually. In really? Yeah, he, he mentioned being on the actor's studio. That's right. See, I first saw him in a movie called Streets of Fire. Right. And uh, and, and the female lead in that movie was so beautiful that, you know, I, I couldn't get her out of my mind. So <laughs> another good friend of mine was in that. I think Sal Landy. You know Sal? No. Another fine actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, yeah, so we just worked with Michael in uh, in Germany, in Baden-Baden. Uh, mm -hmm. Real nice guy. Real nice guy. Well, uh, yeah. thank you very kindly for being so generous with your time, and uh, I wish you well. All the best, John. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.